All right, that thing looks good as new. So the next thing I want to address here is with this driver's seat. So it's been pretty worn out for a while and it's getting pretty uncomfortable to sit on that because it's like crooked and it's my back starting to hurt from that seat. So I just got a good deal on this used one here, which it's better, but it's not perfect. All right, so let's get this installed. So I may try to use the cushion off the passenger seat instead of just swapping this entire thing. But I haven't looked at it yet. Let's see what happens. Thanks, metric. All right, so here's the problem with using this is the passenger seat is this and this will be on the wrong side. Unless All right, that's pretty easy. This one's actually in good shape too. Uh, this side doesn't come apart easy. I'm just cutting this.
All right, look at that. Good as new. That's nice. All right, let's get that in the truck. All right, look at that. Wow, that feels so much nicer. Gee, I feel a lot higher up now too. All right, cool. Let's fix the suspension now. Alright, the next issue I want to address here is with the suspension on this truck. So some of the rear leaf springs kind of cracked out of it and whenever I have a trailer on now or waiting it, the thing's kind of like bottomed out the whole time. It should be sitting a little more level and the rear should be a little bit higher and you can see the trailer. You know, that could be adjusted one, but two, it's almost touching the ground. So let's get some new leaf springs in the back of this truck. All right, so you can see this leaf pack, I had four springs and we're missing missing some of it there. All right, usually uh, these U-bolts aren't reusable, but let's just see what happens here. Yeah, there's no way those are coming apart. That's all right, I got new ones anyway. These copper nickel brake lines are great. See how there's no rust on them? The steel ones should be illegal. Um, and this salt, they shouldn't be using that salt. It destroys these vehicles. Look at this salt right here. And I wash this thing too. You can't ever get it off. All right, this is what I got for parts. This set of springs was out of a th one ton truck. This is a three quarter ton we're working on and it may have been a dual wheel because there are a lot more springs here. Plus it had a set of helper springs, which goes right here. I'm not gonna use those because I need to get the brackets off that frame. Now this is eight springs in this pack. So this could be a much heavier pack. All right, now my plan was gonna be to install that entire spring pack up in the truck. All right, so the problem I'm seeing with getting this main spring out of here, you know, one, that guy just cut the brackets off the other frame, but I don't really want to deal with that. And this bolt, like, you can't get to the other side of it without taking the gas tank off, and it looks like a whole big ordeal. Plus, once we come to the back, too, that's probably not easy to deal with either. Since there's nothing wrong with that main leaf, I'm just going to leave that right in there, take this bolt off, and just put all the other springs with this leaf. That will be a much easier job. Something's happening. Am I getting it? I think I got it. Oh, 
one. All right, so let me explain where I'm at here. So I got the new springs and I'm ready to bolt this, bolt it together. But here's my old blocks that were in there. And you can see there's no way that's gonna fit in there. I can't pull that down low enough. Now, some people would do that. It would lift the truck. I want the truck, I still want the truck to ride about the same height. I do not wanna lift this thing because um, for towing heavy loads and stuff, lifting is, is no good. So. So I ordered these blocks, which are an inch thick, which should fit in there fine. Yeah, look at that. All right. All right, hang on. These, these, so these are aftermarket or something, but they don't quite fit. Let me just drill that a little bigger. All right, I need to drill that 0.8 inches. That's probably enough right there. Yeah, look at that, perfect. So the other problem I had, these springs came with these U-bolts out of the one ton and they went together a little bit differently. But you could see this, it's too big. It, it went around the bottom of the axle instead of on the top, but the axle out of a one ton was a lot thicker and I, I can't use these. So I had to, and then you, you, auto parts stores, you call them up asking for leaf for these bolts and, and they never can get them. So I got these from a spring place. But they make them right there, they bend them. These are nice, but look at these nuts. I like how thick they are. Every time I've tried to do U-bolts and reuse them, it's like you waste more time reusing them than you do. Just cut them and get new ones every time.
but that looks nice. Now these need to be tightened up again after driving for you know a week or two. And I would cut these shorter, but I just want to make sure the truck rides at the right height. If it's too low or something, I could get thicker blocks for in here. I, th I think it's going to be right though. I want the truck to sit the way it was. Well, a little bit higher than it was, but just with stiffer springs. And that's probably what we did. So. All right, so since this is going to be the exact same project as the other side, let's just fly through this. This thing won't sit in there far enough. And I could grind that down, that would be easy, but I'd rather that this hole got deeper. So, let me try something. Oh, it's just rust. I thought this thing lost depth or something because it was... All right, that's fixed. This thing feels higher, especially with the seat being higher too. Oh, that looks pretty level. I'm good with it. That's a lot stiffer too. All right, cool, let's take it for a drive. Hang on, I wanna see something first. Look at that thing, the thing's still like level, that's cool. That would have that thing would have been bottomed out before. I'll probably do something about the if I if I'm still driving this by next winter, I'm gonna put stiffer front springs in it because with the I mean with no plow it's fine, but the plow on there, the front end was kind of low and it got me stuck a few times. Um, I see there's a few options for that. One guy said just get the springs out of a diesel because the diesel engine's heavier. So this is the gas engine, so that will make up for the weight of the plow. All right, let's take this for a drive. Levi, come on. All right, so this is the first time driving the truck with the new springs. Um, you know, on my somewhat bumpy driveway, it seems all right, you know, not too stiff. I just bought that roller. So the truck's riding pretty well. So it's important not to have too stiff of a spring because the problem you'd have is 
like taking a turn on a bumpy road what would happen the back of the vehicle would like skip out of control and bounce off the road it would be like driving in a Bronco too <laughs> the other problem you'd have too on when you're empty because that's a problem with dump trucks because they're so stiff on a wet road around a turn they'll just want to slide out because of how stiff they are I mean one time in my F800 when it was empty I, I just I spun the thing right around on on a slick road you know and it was just um, you know when it's loaded it's not a problem but. all right so I'm sure I'm gonna get a few comments on this about how rusty this truck is now to, to answer those questions now all the trucks are rusty like this um, and and if people immediately jump like oh inspection it, it, it's the user's fault no it's not the, it's really the manufacturer's fault because they're making them that way on purpose they're not stupid they're making vehicles rust out so people have to buy new ones now if cars didn't rust out at least my cars I would never buy a new car because they're so I mean they're not that easy to fix but they're very fixable and it's just it makes more sense just to fix a vehicle forever but once the whole thing rusts out like really this car if something major happens to it like it needs an engine or a transmission it's not worth it because of how rusty it is and, and plus these things are so cheap I mean you can get a truck like this nicer you know for 2500 bucks you know because they lose their value like crazy you know I mean new this truck you know base model three-quarter ton four-wheel drive you know it's like 35,000 bucks and then once you start adding features to it, it goes up from there. I know the next one I'm going to get is going to be a one ton because I, I always kind of thought three quarter tons and one tons were the same thing. But then I'm realizing like how much bigger the axles are and, and, and it springs and everything, you know, because there's a big difference between a half ton and a three quarter ton. I would never, you know, waste the time on a half ton. I'll probably try to get one from the south or something because they're all rusted out up here. Alright, so the end of this video is just going to be stories. Alright, so people may ask too, why didn't I paint it? You know, painting it, I, I don't think that makes any difference to, to stop rust, to prevent rust. I think the best thing to do is coat it with oil and they sell like this oil that's meant for it called fluid film and everyone keeps swearing by that. And I was going to do it this year, I bought the stuff. The problem was it, we got a real early snowstorm in November and I hadn't done it yet and I was just on a five day cruise. As I was getting home from the cruise, I had to snow plow immediately because it was snowing as I was going home. So I didn't have a chance to fluid film the truck. And then once the thing had salt on it, I figured, oh, there's no reason to do it because it's already got salt. So I'm gonna do it next year at least. And I'll try to do all my vehicles. All right, so the other thing I do to keep vehicles from rusting is I won't use most of my vehicles in the winter time. If there's salt on the road, I'm not using any trailers. I, I don't use my dump trucks, anything. I just, all I do is drive this. I try even try not to drive my SUV just to keep the salt on one vehicle. People may say, oh, this thing's gonna break. Now, you know this truck's still pretty solid I mean I've tested it pretty well by you know even last year I had the thing stuck in the mud with a trailer on it a heavy trailer and I picked it up with the Hitachi pulling it out you know some trucks would have just broke right in half if they were rusty usually the Dodges I haven't seen any Dodges break in half the ones that the, the, the brand I've seen the most of them break in half are definitely Chevy's you know they love just splitting right right you know behind the cab in the bed um, and some Toyotas. I, I'll tell some funny rusty vehicle stories. I mean, here's one. My friend had a Chevy Colorado, and the, the thing was pretty new. He still had a lot of payments on it, and it looked nice. And then we were working on it, and put it up on the lift, and the truck just split right in half. And um, you know, for how new that truck was, I was like, man, I I wouldn't buy a Chevy. This is a piece of junk. This is the way they had the frame put together. They had like a seam right in the frame and it split right on that seam and uh, we welded it back together but you know it for how new that vehicle was that shouldn't have happened um, the best way to weld them back together I found is you know some people don't like cut out sections of frame and then plate them 
and and that's a huge job and you usually don't want to do that if, if the vehicle's a piece of junk already um, what works the best is just take rebar like five ace rebar send it down the whole frame and tie into everything that's solid so usually hit your front suspension mounts hit your transmission cross member send it all the way back to the rear transmission mounts or the rear leaf spring mounts and weld it to everything that's solid and once you do that you know that's quick and easy to do it's cheap and usually the vehicles are fixed after that you know you'll get a few more years out of them another funny story of, of trucks breaking in half one time we were off-roading in the woods me and a bunch of friends and one of my friends was there in a Toyota and the it was pretty junky but like the frame broke and it still ran and everything but the drive shaft came apart you know u-joint broke something happened wouldn't wouldn't drive um but the truck was still one piece but they're like oh we got to get this out of here it won't drive so i'm i'm there on my dirt bike and another one of my friends is there he's in an Zuzu trooper and he's like oh let me tell you out so he we, we hooked the toyota to the Zuzu, and for whatever reason my friend in the Zuzu just drove like as fast as he could possibly go and you know those Zuzus people people think they're junk or something but no those things are pretty savage the suspension on them those things through the woods hitting jumps off them and, and they can take it you know you try hitting jumps in a jeep and just every part will break immediately they're garbage but the Zuzus could take it now they they had their other problems you know they would rust out really bad too and uh, all the body mounts would break and head gaskets would blow, but but the, the, but the suspension wouldn't break. But anyway, so he's towing this Toyota full throttle, and then pretty quickly the Toyota breaks in half. The second half of the vehicle just stays in the trail, and I'm following on my dirt bike. So my friends who are in the Toyota steering it, all of a sudden the, the truck is leaning like this because half of it's missing, and that guy's going like 30 down this trail and they're still trying to steer the thing and they're sliding all over the place bouncing off trees he had no brakes no way to stop them it was just hilarious <laughs> and, and, and then we finally get to the end of the trail they make it and and you know they got no suspension they're dragging on rocks this thing is like jumping up in the air every time it hits a rock and we're like dude kevin what are you trying were you trying to kill them i mean it was hilarious but it was pretty funny uh, but yeah, that's you know that's how these trucks can break right in half. Mostly the Chevys do it though, not not so much the Toyotas, not so much the Fords. Now Fords rust out really bad too, but you know they usually don't break in half at least. And the Dodges, you know, they rust, but usually the transmissions go in these before before they'll break in half. And once the transmissions go, people usually don't bother. I did the transmission in this a few years ago, and it's been fine. So, Alright, so as far as these rusty frames go, I mean, one, I don't know how they're getting away with the steel brake lines. Because, you know, people think a rusty frame is dangerous. Like, no, I, it's not that bad. I can usually assess how strong the frame's still going to be. And, and trust me, this truck is still a lot stronger than a brand new unibody car. Really, the steel brake lines are nonsense because they're pretty dangerous. Because what happens is usually the, the, the brake the, because the brake lines rust and then people don't notice it. One, they shouldn't be made out of steel. That's the whole problem. And the problem is you go, you get in yourself in an emergency braking situation where you slam on the brakes and the brake line will burst because it's made out of steel. And then then the vehicle loses brakes right when you need them. All right, so a real good test to test if the brake lines are good or not. When the vehicle is running in park, just stop. Just stand on that brake pedal as hard as you can. That's when you want the brake lines to fail when you're not moving. Then you can fix it, you know, and find out about it when you're not driving. Um, but really, those copper nickel lines, those are the best. I've, I've been putting them in everything because the steel lines are like a joke or something. And I've never had a problem. And they're not even any more money. Really, the vehicle should just come that way from the factory. I mean, because you see these safety recalls sometimes, and it's like an issue that doesn't even exist. And, uh, and, and they'll be fixing these cars, but these steel brake lines are a real issue. Um, so, I mean, a lot of times I'll see the rusty brake line. I'll change them even before, you know, before they blow, because it, it shouldn't be steel in the first place. The thing of rusty frames, too, I don't know how the car companies are getting away with it, but at least Toyota, they were doing something about it. 
um, a lot and a lot of my friends who have had to Toyotas one they were either giving people new frames and I know a lot of people have had that done where they'll give the truck a brand new frame or they're buying the truck back at one and a half times the blue book value which was a really generous offer um, you know so that's what if Toyota sold a three-quarter ton or a one ton truck I'd probably buy it because you know that's a, that's a good company to, to do stuff like that um, yeah that's great a Toyota to be fixing these trucks I mean in the other company they don't even care I mean one time my friend had this f-150 the thing was still pretty new and it looked nice you know I think it was eight years old and the gas tank fell out and he ran it over it destroyed the gas tank it was a big pain to get towed I mean really you should catch a vehicle if the tank straps are rusting out change them I mean I changed the tank straps in this before because they were rusted and the tank was gonna fall out and they're cheap it's a lot easier just to change the straps than to get the, the tank got run over I mean one time I was at my house and this guy shows up and his gas tank it's hanging it's hanging it was in a Chevy truck the gas tank was hanging by the fill neck and like almost dragging on the ground and I say I'm like how do you not notice this how long has that been like that and he's like oh what what's the problem I'm like dude are you serious and then, you know we tied it up there with rope and I'm like dude you need new tank straps your, your tank is dragging on the ground um, but so all right back to my friend with that Ford so Ford had a recall for tank straps rusting out and they were supposed to be fixing it for free so we bring the thing to the Ford dealer and like fix this truck and they're like like no it's too rusty we, we can't fix it it's not our fault it rusted I'm like how is it not your fault it rusted I mean the thing's garbage and it's eight years old you should have to give them a new truck um, and they just didn't care but it was, it, then my friends were like oh, I'm not fixing this truck it needs five hundred dollars I've got the truck off them and I fixed it but the thing was so rusted out all right so I'll tell a few stories of frames breaking while in vehicles I've been driving um, and I usually don't think it's that big of a deal to have a frame break while you're driving. I mean, one, assess the vehicle if the frame's getting ready to break. You can usually tell, um, you know, embrace it up beforehand. But times I've had the frame break, I mean, one time I was driving in a car and it was a thing with uh, four link rear suspension and one of the suspension mounts ripped off the frame on the back. And what happened when that happened is the rear axle wasn't attached anymore on the one side and it was moving back and forth. And I, I re immediately could tell what happened. And I know that would have made some people just crash because what happens is it made the rear of the car steer to the side. But you could just correct with the front. You know, you're just driving the car down the road like a crab, you know, sideways. But I thought it was kind of funny. I was driving with my passenger. I was like, look, if I step on the gas, I'm, the back of the car is steering one way. If I step on the brakes, it's steering the other way. I'm like, oh, we got four wheel steering now. This is pretty cool. Some people always kind of ask, like, oh, why I'm driving such a junky looking truck. Well, I don't really care what it looks like. A $2,000 truck does the exact same job a $30,000 truck does. So that's, you know, that, you know, the economics of it, too. That's the other reason. But this truck, when I got this truck, I, I wasn't even planning on driving this. What happened is I had a, I did have a nice truck. It was a nice truck like this. It was diesel. It wasn't rusty. And a tree fell on it during a hurricane. And I was gonna fix it, needed a cabinet bed. I bought this as a parts truck. Supposedly had a bad transmission. I brought the thing home and I got it from an auction. And, but then the transmission worked. So I'm like, I just ended up driving it. And this has been the best pickup truck I've ever had because I'm driving, it's been eight years I've been driving this truck now. All right, well, this truck's driving pretty nice. It's really nice having this new seat and new springs. All right, Levi? All right. All right, let's go do something else.